Good day students, my name is Ajayi Akitsunde Oluwatosi, your physics teacher for today. Topic for today is crystalline and amorphous solid substance, behavior objective. At the end of this lesson, the learner should be able to describe crystalline and amorphous solid substance. Two, state characteristics, properties of crystalline and amorphous solid substance. 3. Differentiate between crystalline solid and amorphous solid substance content. We can't discuss crystalline and amorphous solid substance without talking about the three states of matter. And what are the three states of matter? We have solid, liquid, and gas. And for us to discuss about the crystalline and amorphous solid substance, we need to concentrate today on solid what is a solid substance solid is one of the three main state of matter along with liquid and gas in a solid particles are packed closely together and are not free to move about within the substance molecular motion for the particle in a solid is confined to a very small vibration of the atoms around their fixed position Therefore, solid have a fixed shape that is difficult to change. Solid also have a definite volume that is, that is, they keep their size no matter how you try to change them. So what we are saying is that the molecules that form a solid uh, material are closely packed. They are not free to move about around uh, because they are all together by a very strong intermolecular force. A very strong intermolecular force exists in within the molecules of a solid substance. Now let's look at it. types of solids. There are two types of solid based on their structure and arrangement of their molecules, atoms, atoms. So the the arrangement of their molecules, or in terms of the structure or the arrangement, is what determines the types of solid we have. And from there, we said that we have two types of solid, which are crystalline solids and amorphous solid. Now, what is a crystalline solid? A crystal or a crystalline solid is a solid material whose constituents, constituent means the material that made up that substance, such as atom, molecules, or ion are arranged in a highly other microscopic structure forming a crystal lattice that extend in all direction they generally have geometric shapes and flat faces and examples include diamond metal and salt what we are saying is that for a crystal the constituents are highly arranged in a in, in, a, in a microscopic structure that when you use a microscope to to view that you will see all the molecules are orderly arranged and as we have said examples are diamond metal and salt to understand crystal we must understand their structure the arrangement of the particle in a crystal solid is in a very other fashion this Articles are arranged in a repeating pattern of a three-dimensional network. That means they are the molecules or ion or atoms. They are arranged in a repeating pattern. That is one special thing about the crystal uh, or solid. And this network is known as crystal lattice. And the smaller unit of a crystal is a unit cell. If you see the history of a crystal, this distinct arrangement of the unit cells will be clearly visible. Crystalline solids have several other characteristics properties. They are generally incompressible, meaning they cannot be compressed into smaller shapes. 
because of the repeating geometric structure of the crystal all the bonds between the particles have equal strengths this means that a crystal solid will have a distinct melting point because applying it will break all the bonds at the same time and you know the bond in a crystal is very strong that the intermolecular force holding the molecules together or the atoms together is very strong so to break the bond you it required a distinct a high melting point so a crystalline solid also exhibits cleavage when when uh, a cleavage when broken apart these pieces we have plain surfaces or straight edge the space between the atoms are very less due to high intermolecular force and crystal have a long range order which means the arrangement of atom is repeated over a great distance i think i will stop here after the break i will come back thank you welcome back yes we are talking about the crystalline solid which we said that it has a high melting point a distinct melting point and they also have a long range order which means the arrangement of atoms is repeated over a great distance now we want to look at types of crystalline solid there are four types of crystalline solid which are molecular solid ionic solid network covalent solid and metallic solid let's quickly look at the four types and molecular solid is also breaking down to non-polar polar and h bonded now molecular solid molecular solid are composed of covalent bonded molecules attract to each other by electrostatic force because covalent bonding involves sharing electrons rather than outright transfer of those particles the shared electrons may spend more time in the electron cloud of the larger atom causing weak or shifting polarity this electrostatic attraction between the two poles that's dipoles is much weaker than ionic or covalent bonding so molecular solid tends to be softer than ionic crystal and have low melting points like less than 100 degrees celsius or 212 um, farad so what we are saying is that for molecular solid that there is a there's, there's electrostatic attraction between the two poles and it has a weak it, that is weaker than ionic uh, crystal so most molecular solid are non-polar non-polar this non-polar molecule solid will not dissolve in water but we dissolve in a non-polar solvent such as benzene octane polar molecular solid such as sugar dissolve easily in water molecular solid are non-conductive so what we are saying is that molecular solid are not conductive examples of molecular solid include ice sugar halogen like solid chlorine and compound consisting of halogens and hydrogen such as hydrogen chloride i said as examples of solid molecular solid includes ice sugar halogen and like solid chlorine or halogen and hydrogen such as hydro hydrogen chloride ionic solids ionic solid compounds form crystal that are composed of oppositely charged ion a positive charged ion called the cation and a negatively charged ion called the anion because of the strong attraction between the opposite charge it takes a long energy to overcome ionic bond this means that ionic compound have high melting point so ionic solid crystal has high melting point why the crystal themselves are hard brittle and non-conductive most ionic compound can be dissolved in water forming a solution of free ion that will conduct electricity they may be simple binary salt like sodium chloride or table salt where one atom of metallic element sodium is born 
to one another of a, a non-metallic element so what we are saying about ionic is that that they are they are con- that they are brittle and non conductive that we, we also say that examples is sodium chloride of in of an ionic solid we also have network covalent solid in a network uh, solid there are no individual individual molecules in the variable, the atoms are covalently bonded in a continuous network resulting to a e crystal and also examples of non network covalent solid are diamond and rubies then we also have metallic solid when we talk about the metallic solid we say that metal are opaque opaque and they are both malleable mi- and ductile Malleable means that they are soft and can be re- that can be shaped or pressed into sheets. White daughter means that they can be pulled into wires. In a metallic bond, the valency electrons are not not donated or shared as they are in ionic and covalent bonding. Rather, the electron cloud of adjacent atom overlap so that electrons become the color the, the localized. The electron moves with relative freedom from one atom to another throughout the crystal. And for this, we say that metal tends to have high melting points. That's one thing about metallic solid. They have high melting points. And an alloy is also is a solid mixture of a metallic element with another substance. Why pure metals can be overly malleable and heavy. Alloys are more workable. Bronze is an alloy of copper and tin. White steel is an alloy of iron, carbon, and other active active. So that is what we want to talk about: the crystallite, various types of crystallized solid. So when I come back, we'll continue. Thank you. Welcome back. We want to look at the second types of uh, solid structure. That's the amorphous solid. Amorphous solid are rigid structure, but they lack a well-defined shape. They do not have a geometric shape, so they are non-crystalline solid. This is why they do not have edge like crystal do. The most common example of an amorphous solid is glass, gel, plastic, various polymer, wax, tin film are also good examples of amorphous solid. Amorphous solid, literally solid without form, is also called solid without form because it does not have a shape. The particle do not have a repeating lattice pattern. Amorphous solid does not have a definite melting point. Instead, it melts gradually over a range of temperature because the bond do not break all at once. This means an amorphous solid will melt into a soft, malleable state. Think candle, candle wax, or molten glass before turning completely into a liquid. What we are saying is that the candle wax does not melt at once, it's gradual. So, amorphous solid melts gradually, gradually until it becomes a liquid. Most classes of solid can be found in an amorphous form. Amorphous solid can be prepared in a variety of ways, such as repeat, uh, rapidly cooling from molten state or settling this solid with an addictive that disrupt the long range order this variation in characteristics of solid occurs due to the arrangement of their molecules here the particles of matter do not form the three-dimensional lattice that means for amorphous it does not form three-dimensional lattice structure that we see in crystalline solid and i said examples of um, amorphous are plastic rubber cold coke fiberglass, cellophane, etc. Now, let us distinguish between the crystal solid and amorphous solid based on their shape. Crystalline solid, they have a definite characteristics, geometric shape to in shape, orderly arranged. But for amorphous, they have irregular shape and lack characteristics, geometric shape due to the short range order. And for their melting point, the crystalline solid has a sharp and characteristic melting point. Why an amorphous do not have a sharp melting point? 
they gradually soften over a range of temperature then cleavage property when caught when crystalline solid when caught with a sharp edge tools they split into two pieces and the newly generated surface are plain and smooth but for a Amorphous. When cut with a sharp edge tool, they cut into two pieces with irregular surface. Crystalline. They have a definite and characteristic heat of fusion. But for amorphous, they do not have a definite heat of fusion. And also, you know, you know, for crystalline, they are true solid. And for amorphous, they are, they are presodo solid or super solid cold liquid then for crystalline uh, structured they have a long range order but for a uh, for an amorphous they have a short range order and as we have said the examples of crystallize are copper silver metals most of these metals and also for the amorphous we said are rubber uh, plastic and glass so at the end of this class i want the student to be able to compare and contrast between crystalline and amorphous substance state two features of crystalline solid substance an assignment the assignment is differentiate between crystalline and amorphous solid substance to state two examples each of crystalline and amorphous solid substance our reference materials are the new school physics the new school physics and some online uh, materials that you can get thank you